to go with a student and when he wrote at school that he wanted to hurt himself and that he wanted to die. And so when the doctor examined him and they came down to the situation, he was upset because his girlfriend had broken up with him. And he was only 11. So we have kids that are dealing with mental issues at an earlier age. There are many kids that are experimenting with drugs and alcohol. A lot of times the alcohol is right inside of their own home and that's how they're able to consume it. Uh, they did a study and said that the average sixth grader has experimented with alcohol during their first year of middle school. So we have kids that are really being exposed to things at a much earlier age. Um, as I went through and I was doing my research, we know that there are different drugs that kids are experimenting with. There's many that you know the names of. There's marijuana, there's heroin, there's crystal meth. Now they have a drug that's called strawberry meth. And it looks like the pop rock candy. And parents have to be aware of the different drugs that they're designing to kids that resemble candy. A lot of kids are using over-the-counter drugs as drug usage also. Taking excessive amounts of, of Tylenol and different other things. And then the one thing that's affecting our young people is that they're using their parents' prescription drugs. And the parents don't realize that the kids are actually taking their medication. And then there's something a lot of people don't talk about, which is huffing, where the kids use household products to um, inhale, and that gives them a high. So we're just talking about what our young people are confronting. Um, our young people are getting sexually active at a much earlier age, to the point that it is really destroying them. Um, in the urban neighborhoods now, we have hospitals and clinics that are actually being set up for young people. So imagine they have adolescent OBGYN clinics now. And inside these clinics, they service 12 to 18 year olds. And I know someone that works there. Wow. And they were saying how the youngest client was like 11, and it was due to incest. And she said by the time they get there, they're 12, they're sexually active, they have one or more STDs, many of them are pregnant, some of them are HIV positive, and there have been a few sad cases of where they already have the full grown AIDS virus. So we're dealing with people that are being promiscuous, and we as the body of Christ, we have to teach abstinence and what the Bible teaches that God can keep you. I also just wanted to address that there are some destructive behaviors that our youth and young people are exhibiting. We know that a lot of young people, they cling to bad habits. Things that they know they shouldn't do, they're doing. They also, they crave violence. We know that there are a lot of young people that they play violent video games, that they're being exposed to just watching cartoons. There's a lot of cartoons on TV that are not for kids. Family Guy is one of them. They're always cursing and saying inappropriate things in inappropriate situations. Um, you'd be surprised if you turned on the Cartoon Network just to see what your kids are watching. And we're raising a generation of unchurched kids, and they're basically cartoon babies. And I got the term cartoon babies from my dad, who's 71. And he said, these young people are having babies, and they sit them in front of the TV, and the TV is now the babysitter. So there are a lot of things that has to be done to confront and cut off the situations that are taking our kids down a destructive road. So we know that kids like to steal and they cheat and they lie. And they're under stress and they want to gamble and gossip and be bullies. And also, we have to realize that our kids are an, an example of what adults do. So it's really hard for adults to say, do as I say, not as I do. So we as the body of Christ, we're working on letting our kids know that we're here and that we're here to build the kingdom so it takes kingdom principles to teach them. There's other instances in the Bible where young people were used. We know that there was a lack and there was lack that day. And with two fish and five loaves of bread, 5,000 were fed. We know that Jairus' daughter had passed away and Jesus came and he raised her from the dead.
So there's always an instance in the Bible where young people were used. We know that back when Moses was born, that the male children were being thrown in the river again because they knew that there was going to be a Messiah soon to come. So we have to realize that history is just repeating itself. Young people will always have struggles. The enemy is going to always be fighting them. It goes all the way back to Cain and Abel. Amen. So we, as the body of Christ, what can we do to change the life of a young person? What can we do to impact their lives? And as we use the word of God, we have to give them practical things to deal with to say, okay, you're dealing with depression. Let's get you help. And it's okay to get help, professional help, because we know that prayer works, but God has given us doctors that have studied the mind and the body to be able to assist when maybe we are not able to help a child that is in need. It's important that we talk to our children, have an open dialogue. It's good to have family night. And so today I just wanted to really press upon, we, we always preach the kingdom and, and the different struggles, but our young people are hurting, and a lot of adults really don't want to address it. Mm -hmm. And in the church there are a lot of taboos that we don't talk about. So it's never addressed, and the kids are just running them up. So I think it's important that the things that are going on, that we are on top of it. When the young people come around and need to see report cards, ask them how school is doing. And I think the most important thing that parents can do is going up to the school, doing unannounced visits, checking report cards. It's important that you ask them what's going on, that you check their book bags, their notebooks. And it's important that sometimes a parent needs to clean a room. Because you never know what you might find under the bed. So um, I just really wanted to leave a few things with maybe the adults that are listening and other young people that have encountered our younger people and thinking we can't take things lightly. When a child says that they're feeling sad or depressed, we need to really address that. When they're being bullied, when kids start being bullied, they don't want to go to school. A lot of them start cutting school. The grades start going down. It's a lot of things that the kids are confronting. And we have to realize that they are not just, oh, they're young, they don't understand. They, they know a lot. And sometimes we don't give them as much credit as we should as to what they do and don't know. So it's important that we lay the foundation and that every young person you meet speak positivity into their lives. Some of them have never been told that you can be great, that you can be a lawyer, that you can be a doctor. I've always tried to tell my kids, you can be the best that you can be of whatever you want to do. The only limit that limits someone is their potential and them saying, I don't want to. But it's important to tell young people, try your hardest, reach for the stars because you never know where you might end up. If we look, I'm sure President Obama didn't expect to be president, you know, when he got into politics and he was really just helping out his community as a grassroots advocate. But you never know. And many times, we limit ourselves. We limit ourselves as to what we can be and what we can do because many times we haven't been exposed. So if all, of, all that you know is where you live and like the five boroughs, but you've never been to your, you've never been to Washington, D.C., you've never been out of the state, and you don't know that there's another life besides what you see. So I think the important thing is that we expose our young people to different things, take them to plays, take them out, just to see that there's a world beyond your front door. And so I would say on today that our commitment should be to our young people. In the Bible, we know that Daniel, he was a great young man, and he really did what he had to do so that him and his friends could prosper. But in all that they did, they never forgot God. So it's important that all that you do, never forget God. So we're just looking at the time and we just